the Logitech MX Master Series is probably the most popular productivity focused mouse out there. In fact, it's also the one that I use day to day. But ASUS also wants a piece of that cake with the ProArt mouse MD300. But can it live up to the MX Master 3? The mouse is completely matte black and fairly light compared to an MX Master 3. It only weighs 109 grams instead of 141 grams, which, given the comments on my MX Master 3 video where a lot of people complained about it being too heavy for gaming, is probably a positive thing. That said, I'm not into competitive gaming and I rather find that its low weight makes it feel less premium. That is also the case because the mouse is made completely from hard plastic and doesn't have a rubberized or soft touch coating. The mouse is a lot smaller than an MX Master 3 and is thus more of a claw grip mouse for me rather than a palm grip. On the bottom the MD300 has a selector button to easily switch between three devices and want to switch from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi mode with the included dongle that's stored in the mouse magnetically. There's also the sensor, which from my experience tracks very accurately on anything except very reflective surfaces. The mouse has a USB-C port on the front for charging or wired operation. The mouse buttons are nice and clicky, but not that quiet. There is also a third middle button above the scroll wheel, which by default just replicates the functionality of clicking the mouse wheel, but can be programmed to do anything else. In addition to the regular scroll wheel, there is also another wheel on the side similar to the MX Master 3, which can be programmed to scroll horizontally in video editing programs or spreadsheets for example. And then there is also the third wheel on the mouse, which ASUS calls the ASUS Dial, but more to what that does in a bit. I first want to touch on what's missing from the mouse, and that's forward and back buttons, the scroll wheel does not tilt either, and a free-flowing mode for the scroll wheel. I really like having a free-flowing wheel for scrolling through long documents or web pages, and this just doesn't have that. I know a lot of people don't like scroll wheels that don't click, but at least having a switch to enable this function would be nice to avoid getting a sore finger from scrolling through long lists. The side scroll wheel is just as useful as on the MX Master 3 and a huge plus for productivity applications. And then there's the ASUS dial, which I'm not that convinced by. It's technically a really good idea to have a dial that serves various functions that can be easily adjusted. In Premiere you can for example use it to zoom in on or scrub through the timeline and easily switch between these functions with just the click of the button in the middle of the dial. Or in Photoshop you can adjust brush size or hardness. And you can add as many functions that can be adjusted along a scale, like layer opacity, zoom, font size, you name it, as you like. You can even create subgroups on the dial menu. In my opinion this really has a ton of potential, but unfortunately there are still some issues with it that often make it more annoying than useful. First of all, the dial is really sensitive and due to its position, really easy to hit by accident. That means that bringing up the dial menu or even changing a value you did not want to change can often happen without your intent. And this doesn't just happen to me every half an hour or so, but more like every few minutes. What is also a problem is that adjusting a value often only works in one direction, but not the other way. In Premiere, for example, I can zoom out on the timeline, but not back in. On the positive side, ASUS's Armory Crate software makes it pretty easy to program the mouse with a lot of possible functions that are already integrated for you to map. There are also a bunch of things about the software that I don't like, however. It installs seven different programs on your computer, including ASUS's RGB lighting service, and this mouse doesn't even have any LEDs. I personally try to have as little stuff running in the background as possible, and all of those different services don't really help with that. It was also not that easy to get the software to recognize the mouse at all at first, and while using the mouse it will constantly bring up a Microsoft Store dialog for you to install ASUS's ProArt app, which only serves ads and has exactly zero functions if you don't have an ASUS laptop. But you still have to install it, because otherwise you can't get rid of that store pop-up getting in your way every few minutes. That's just a no-go, in my opinion. Of course, to get the full potential out of this mouse, you should install the Armory Crate software. But what's not great is that the mouse doesn't even function correctly as a normal mouse without it. That means that just using it as a normal mouse on for example your work laptop where you can't install the software isn't really possible. Because without its software and drivers, the mouse sometimes treats mouse movements as scrolling, and that just makes it a chore to get anything done. All in all, I still think this is a product with a lot of potential. The hardware is really quite promising, even if it could use a bit more of a premium touch for its high price. But all of the software bugs and annoyances give me a really hard time recommending this for 150 euros. That's literally twice what the MX Master 3 costs and that is already an expensive mouse. For that price, the software problems just aren't really forgivable. Of course, technically it could be worth it because all of the extra functions could make you quite a bit more productive. But it's kinda like having bad internet versus no internet. It's technically better, but actually makes you less productive in the end. I hope the software is improved in the future, but you shouldn't really buy a product based on a promise. 
And the thing is, you can't really buy this mouse anyway, because I haven't seen it available anywhere outside of ASUS's own web store. If you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press, and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.